Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks very much for joining um, the Scale Away webinar. Um, my name is Holly, I'm with the Unearthed uh, team. Um, so I'll be kind of kicking off the, the uh, webinar today and then I'm gonna hand over to the Alcoa team to uh, run through uh, the challenge and then start answering your questions. So um, while I'm just uh, introducing the session and, and letting you guys know um, how we're gonna work, Andrew, if you could just make sure that, uh, Andrew from Alcoa, that your video and audio is all good to go uh, when I pass over to you. Um, just send me a note in the chat if there's any issues on your side. Okay, yep, I think I've got my, my phones ready. I'll just work out the video. Ah, awesome, and are you with uh, Paul and Johan as well? Uh, no, no, I'm here by myself. Okay. Ah, um, okay. Uh, oh, good. I will. Okay. Um, so uh, for the session today, um, just as a bit of a, as a bit of an intro, um, how it's going to work. So uh, Andrew, Paul, and Johan will spend some time introducing the, the challenge um, to you. Um, if at any time you have a question. Uh, there is a Q&A kind of box uh, down the bottom. So just pop your question in there um, and then the guys will see that come up and be able to answer that. Uh, so I'll leave it to them as to whether kind of to answer your questions as they're talking, if it's relevant uh, right there and then, or we can wait to, um, you know, after that kind of 15, 20 minute introduction to the challenge uh, to get onto some of your questions. So uh, please just pop your questions in there. So, so everybody who is uh, not uh, from um, Unearth and Alcoa um, is currently muted. Um, so I will ask you to just pop your, type your questions in. Um, but also, if you have any issues with that, just um, you can uh, raise your hand um, via the uh, there. Um, and then um, I'll be able to allow you to talk. Andrew, I'm just going to mute you quickly. Um, so yeah, so if any time you have any questions um, as, aside from on the challenge, like any issues hearing, any issues with uh, sound, just pop that in the, in the chat and I'll look into, into that for you. Um, so I think that's pretty much a good to go for the intro. A couple of other things that we'll have at the end, um, I'll just talk about um, how to access more details on the, on the challenge online and where to go and what some of the next steps are. Um, but now I will hand over to um, Andrew and the other, uh, our cover team to um, give you a bit of an introduction uh, to the challenge itself. So Andrew, are you good to go to start your video there? Uh, yes, I can start my video as soon as it's enabled. Uh, is that not enabling you there? No, it says the host has stopped it for the moment. Okay. Is that allowing you now to share? Uh, there we yes. go. Yep. It's <laughs> come up now. So. Okay. All right. Is that um? Does that sound clear? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Good to go. All right. Great. Yeah. So um. Well, so we just introduced the challenge. Yeah, now. and and if you need any, so I've got the website up. So if you want me to at any time share my screen to run through anything like any of the images or any more details, just let me know. But yeah, I think if we could just start with kind of yeah, um, background to the problem, uh, what you guys are looking for, maybe like yeah, kind of ten fifteen minute rundown. Yep. Okay. So, I guess with uh, the background to our problem is we've got. Um, uh, process vessels uh, during operation they will accumulate a lot of scale. Uh, a very brief introduction to the uh, Bayer process which um, is what we use to manufacture alumina um, aluminium oxide which eventually becomes aluminium but that process is our ore which is 30 percent uh, aluminium oxide is dissolved in high pressure digesters in caustic soda and then uh, then we filter out the mud and sand and then we cool the cool the the, uh, the liquid with the dissolved alumina until the dissolved alumina will precipitate out we extract that 
uh, and that's our final product. And the, the liquid, which is concentrated caustic soda, goes around again to dissolve more bauxite. That process means for most of our, most of our, throughout most of our process, we have alumina dissolved in a liquid that is trying to precipitate out. And that alumina does um, uh, form a uh, scale coating inside most of our, most of our process equipment. Uh, so every now and then we have to open up our equipment uh, and, and take that scale out. The scale forms a very hard um, cemented, cemented layer that can be up to two meters thick in some cases inside the vessel. Uh, and we have to, there's two main ways we get that, that scale out of our process equipment is, uh, is with uh, high pressure water, uh, which is very powerful. High pressure water pumps create a powerful jet that cuts the scale uh, and also um, creates pressure underneath the scale and in the cracks that that forces the scale, breaks the scale up into pieces and knocks and blasts it off the wall. The other way is with um, large um, pneumatic jackhammers, uh, very large pneumatic jackhammers that uh, just break the scale as if it was, uh, as if it was concrete or rock. Um, uh, both of these ways are quite, um, are quite slow. Uh, the mechanical descale with the pneumatic hammers is what is fastest, but whenever we use that, we run a risk of uh, damaging the tank. High pressure water will not damage the steel tank, and so it's uh, much safer for the tanks, but it's, uh, but it's slower. So we generally use the high pressure water inside um, our, our pressure equipment, um, which, we, which is extremely expensive to repair if it's damaged, uh, and inside our atmospheric tanks, um, we will use the often use the mechanical um, pneumatic hammers because they are they are much easier to repair any damage on the uh, on the wall. So the scale, the challenge the challenge is really around the uh, the high pressure uh, the high pressure water descale of our um, of our pressure equipment. Um, yeah, the pressure equipment is complicated. Descaling the pressure equipment is complicated by the fact that the design of the equipment means there's relatively small openings uh, to get any equipment into the tank to descale it. Uh, so currently the, the most common method for descaling is to lower what's called a tank cleaning head into the, into the, into the vessel. Um, which is then mainly hanging. Uh, it has uh, two has two uh, jets that are rotating around, and as they rotate around, the jets come into contact with the wall and will then blast the scale off the wall. But as they're rotating around um, for a fair bit of the time, the jets are actually aimed at fresh air and don't do any cutting. So that makes it quite slow as well. And then we descale the whole tank by, by moving the, uh, that tank cleaning head around, um, lowering it up and down the tank and also moving it to different locations within the tank until the whole wall is covered. Uh, yeah, and we're uh, looking for uh, any, uh, any bright, um, any good ideas around how that can be done more, uh, more effectively. So um, yeah, I guess it would be good. It'd be a good opportunity to ask questions. I think, um, Andrew, as we kind of let people type their questions in, we get to okay. maybe get an overview of a couple of things. Um, so uh, maybe a bit more on, I know you, you mentioned previously, you think that's quite an opportunity to potentially improve that tank cleaning head efficiency um, so maybe a bit more on um, what that what that could be like and where people could look at those improvements. And also, um, I thought it might be useful to just give a bit of a rundown of some of the other things that people have looked at to address the problem of scale um, previously, aside from the actual cleaning aspect. Just to provide a bit of oh, background. 
Okay. Um, all right. Yeah. So other 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 methods that we've used to um, other methods that we've used to to clean the scale out would be um, well, we have at times used being forced to use mechanical solutions inside our pressure equipment um, just when scale was too heavy for um, for the high pressure water D scale. Um, we have made efforts to try and control the scale growth um, with some success. So that extends the life of the tanks out, but, um, but they still do need to come out for D scale. At the moment, we've been able to extend them out. Originally, they were down to nine months. We've managed to double that by using water sprays inside the tanks that, uh, that slow down the scale growth, but we still have to take them out uh, of service to clean them eventually. When they are out of service, they're very expensive. We lose around about $10,000 a day of production because of the, uh, every time that we've got one of these, um, one of these tanks out of service. Um, the, we have had, um, we have had some success with, um, with uh, articulated arms that focus the um, focus the high pressure water um, with precision, um, but they um, they've proven quite difficult. Um, we have had some some working with with a with a level of success, but getting them reliable is quite a challenge. The um, the reaction forces. The reason the tank cleaning head has two jets is that one jet will balance out the reaction force of the other jet because the uh, the pressure and volume of the water that is coming out of the nozzle creates um, a very large uh, very large reaction force um, from the water. So any kind of any kind of articulated arms that have a single jet that can focus it directly on the wall they can be they can be quite effective in directing in in getting some good productivity out of the high pressure water but they do have to be extremely robust um to be able to extremely robust to be able to uh withstand the reaction forces and also the the mechanical impact when the scale is blasted off the wall by the high pressure water there can be some quite large, you know, up to a, um, you know, several hundred kilos chunks of um, of scale falling off the wall, uh, and even um, getting um, blasted across the uh, across the tank. So it can be it's an extremely uh, rough environment they have to work in, and plus the the reliability is critical because the uh, the ten thousand Ten thousand dollars a day um, downtime of having the tank out is also the becomes the cost of any downtime of the cleaning equipment. So, um, in previous experience, when if we have had a a solution that is a solution that's not reliable, we have lost a lot of productivity in getting the unreliable solution out uh, out of the tank to then step back and start reapplying the known uh, the known reliable solution, which is a tank cleaning head. The, uh, the contractor that does the cleaning will hold spare tank cleaning heads. So in the event that they one fails, they just swap it over and drop a new one in. So it, uh, it makes up in reliability for some of what it loses in terms of, in terms of uh, productivity. Awesome. So we've got a few um, questions coming through now. So the first one is, um, yep. what is the pH of the water used in the high pressure jets? Uh, the pH, the water is uh, roughly pH, very close to pH seven. It's um, it's potable water that we spray that we we use as a feedstock for the high pressure water. Awesome. So next question is, what is the measured force of one nozzle operation to stop it moving? Um, I would, um, 
I would have to go away. I'd have to go away and, and calculate that off the top of my head. I don't, I don't know. Um, I think the, um, the typical nozzle is around 40,000 PSI, uh, 40,000, uh, 40 thousandths of an inch in diameter. And the pressure is around 3000, uh, atmospheres. So I would, have to do a quick check and that, that's from memory um i'd have to go and check but it's it is somewhere up in around 100 kilos of um 100 kilos of of reaction force yeah um so someone else asked a question about um what is the ph and temperature range during operation and how frequently do you descale uh during operation the, the ph is 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 very uh is very high it's a concentrated caustic solution of uh so it's it, it's well in it it's well in excess of 14. um the the temperature in operation is it ranges from it ranges from around a hundred and 150 degrees celsius to 100 degrees celsius depending on exactly which vessel uh we're looking at which tank we're looking at and we descale usually around once every 18 months of operation. Um, oh. Awesome, so next question. Have you considered a ceramic coating like chrome oxide, which should help prevent a sticking layer with the hydrate? We have had, we have had some, uh, we have had some, we have tried some scale coatings. Uh, scale resistant coatings that make it easier to descale and they they are successful the problem that we the problem that we have is that then in service the, the coatings are quite expensive to apply um, they need to be reapplied um, at, periodically and in service we often we found that the scale coating um, will result in a large a large chunk of scale uh, breaking away from the vessel unpredictably um, and blocking the outlet. Um, and when that happens, the production losses uh, step up to around $20,000 an hour. So that's an extremely risky thing for us to do. So, so we don't use those, those, um, those low adherence coatings because the scale, we found the scale still forms. Um, it's just unstable and breaks off falling into the tank. Um, so I've got a few questions coming uh, in about kind of chemical solutions. So I've got someone else that's asked, um, yeah, more generally, uh, what chemical means have you tried to minimize um, scale formation? Um, the, the, uh, we haven't, we can't put any, um, any anti, um, we can't put any, uh, oh, the scale formation is, uh, the precipitate of, uh, as a precipitate of, of alumina, which later on in our process, we need to, we need to be able to precipitate out effectively. So we can't put, um, we can't put, uh, any any chemical treatment that would hinder um, precipitation because it will damage the downstream productivity. Uh, we do put uh, we do put uh, lime into the digestion process, um, and that stabilizes the uh, the alumina to in solution somewhat to to help stop it precipitating out too early. Um, let it stay super saturated for longer. Um, until it reaches the precipitation part of our process. Uh, if that, um, yeah. So um, the questions are on the, the, the questions yeah, are these ones can, on the chat, are they? Uh, yep. There's some, there's two places. So there's some people are putting them in the chat and then there's actually, if you go to the bottom, there's a button that says Q and A. Okay. Uh, oh, yep. Yep. I can see both of those. Yeah. So cool. I can so, answer yeah. them. Feel free to tackle all of those. <laughs> all right. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, all right. Um, starting at the top, uh, Robert, the mentions the hydrodynamics and chemical solutions. Yes. So, um, 
the uh, the chemical solutions we have investigated, we haven't been able to have any success with them yet. Um, we do we do clean a lot of our piping and some of our tanks with uh, a concentrated caustic solution uh, that that does dissolve the uh, the alumina. But these large these large pressure tanks that we're looking at in this challenge, um, that's not a practical uh, that's not a practical option for us. Um, the uh, the hydrodynamics um, uh, we have uh, we have studied them. We don't see uh, we we haven't been able to see any any way that we can use um, hydrodynamics and flow to uh, to reduce the scale formation. Um, uh, uh, most of the tanks we're looking at as well are actually flash tanks, so they are. Um, the the process they run is um, a, a superheated superheated liquor is fed into the flash tank where it, um, it partly vaporizes um, to cool it down. The uh, the cooler liquid section, the cooler liquid component, goes to the bottom of the tank and passes out through the bottom, and the vapor um, goes up the tank um, and uh, out and is collected. Uh, and fed into some other some other parts of the process, but that vapor uh, often contains a, a small amount of of carryover droplets, and those droplets uh, create the scale buildup through the rest of the tank. All right, so hopefully that um, that answers that question. The um, the plant and process lake water. The um, the the only the only the only the only liquid that can dissolve dissolve the scale is uh, is a is a concentrated and hot um, caustic soda solution, uh, and and that would be that would be too hazardous to actually use as high pressure water the the high pressure water process will create uh well does create uh, an awful lot of mist the amount of energy that goes into the water means on impact it uh it uh, atomizes a lot of the a lot of the the water and if that water was uh, was concentrated caustic cleaning solution, that mist would be very hazardous. And also the uh, the pumps the uh, the pumps would uh, would wear out uh, extremely extremely quickly with that kind of aggressive medium um, trying to pump that aggressive medium. So uh, the potable water is actually highly filtered. Um, to, to give a very pure water into the pumps um, because of their uh, required um, clearances. Um, yeah, low impact explosives, they, um, we've never used uh, any, any explosive solutions inside our, um, inside uh, these vessels. Um, they are, um, they are, um, uh, they are registered. They are classified plant um, with statutory um, statutory obligations uh, under West Australian regulations, uh, and uh, we we would be extremely nervous putting uh, any explosives into the uh, inside those uh, those vessels. And I'm, we're sure the regulator would be um, the same. We have tried um, the. Uh, I guess what they call chemical explosives, where we drill drill a hole into the scale, um, fill it with a particular chemical compound that expands um, uh, with with a lot of force, um, and can do the same cracking exercise, but without the explosion. Um, it's it works, but it's uh, it's extremely slow. Um, it makes it too expensive. 
Andrew, just uh, just one comment. Sorry, everybody. You and Reps from Alcoa as well. One of the things, and, and Andrew, you would have been there. I, I was too young at the time, but uh, I've heard we've also tried a percussion cone fracture, which was effectively the introduction of very high pressure air uh, to actually blast some of the scale in some of our precipitation tanks at Quinana many years ago. Uh, and from what I understand, that was also successful, but quite... Um, risky and extremely loud, uh, knowing that our refineries are in uh, reasonably well populated areas, uh, it was a solution that we couldn't continue using. Okay, um, so I think, thanks Johan, that'll, um, that's our experience with the uh, with the explosives, the downtime, um, $10,000 a day. We takes us around, um, takes us around uh, 18 days to, no, actually just to descale the tank, it takes us around a week. Um, and then after that, we have maintenance of the tank. Um, the, uh, the size of the tank entry point, it varies between different tanks, but mostly they are around um, 600 millimetres uh, diameter um, as the main manhole on the side. The, uh, the other piping entries are around 300 to 400 millimetres diameter. So for example, the, uh, the vapour outlet at the top of the tank is in that range um, and as well as the uh, the uh, liquid outlet at the bottom of the tank is uh, is in that range, and then the the uh, the inlet is also the the uh, the inlet that feeds the superheated slurry into the tank is also around that diameter. But there is a manhole in the side of around six hundred millimeters diameter. Um, the uh, all of yeah of um, so for Paul's question, um, blow down or release of the slurry in production, does it all stay in the tank? It, it all, um, the process that is happening in most of these tanks is through the side of the tank, a, a feed of, of superheated slurry is, comes in the side and then is directed downwards. Um, that superheated slurry uh, vaporizes in the lower pressure and that vaporization cools cools the uh, remainder of the liquid component um, that's what we're intending to get out of the uh, out of the out of the tank is a cooling effect um, and the cool the cooled uh, the cooled liquid comes out of the bottom of the tank and the uh, the the vapor that has that has flashed off that vapor it comes out of the top of the tank, but it is not released to the environment. It's collected and usually goes to a shell and tube, the shell side of a shell and tube heat exchanger where it condenses to heat up some other process flow. Um, so, so that's, um, that's where the, uh, that's where that vapor goes and it's used to heat up something else in the process. Um, Paul's next question, what percentage of is, is water in the mix? Um, the high pressure water, well, the high pressure water is a hundred percent high pressure water. Uh, we go through the feed into the water, into the pump is around, um, 50 to 70 liters per minute, um, of operation. So we use a lot more water than the volume of scale we eventually get out. Um, but it starts off as 100% water and as it flows out of the bottom, as the scale's getting cleaned, it's still pretty clean water. Um, but it's, uh, it's definitely not clean enough to be able to filter and feed back into the pump. Uh, anonymous attendee, um, have we considered robots? Um, we, we have tried articulated, um, we have used articulated arms um, with some with some limited success. Uh, where they've been successful, they've had to be 
custom design for a particular uh, uh, a particular tank and they've had to be and they've been extremely rugged because as I mentioned they they need to be very reliable because if we have to swap uh, they've always been too expensive to have to have two of them and keep a spare um, which means the one that we have that we're using has to be extremely reliable because if it if it fails um, then we have to fall back to the fall back to the uh, the previous method, and it's and we lose the uh, lose the time in the changeover of that um, of that uh, system. Uh, we don't have a we don't have a test environment um, for any of any of this equipment. It would need to be. We can obviously test it outside. Um, uh, put up some dummy mounts and test it outside but uh, inside a vessel we don't have any spare process vessels to use on that um all right uh, really quickly stop you there andrew yes to, yes um, please pop, pop paul on which means i just have to uh, uh, your video might go off shortly but let me see it maybe not one second uh no you're still there excellent so um i will just go uh, yeah, so please continue. And now um, we will also have uh, Paul from Alcoa joining. So uh, Paul will be able to jump in whenever you uh, like, Paul, if you have any 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 comments on any of these. Hey, Holly, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, you can hear me. Right, I'm on now. So I've just been quietly watching. Looks like Andrew, you've got it covered, mate. So I've got okay, yeah. questions. So. Let me know if I go off track at all. Um, all right, for T Mazira, um, what is the thickness of the vessel walls? Uh, I think they range between um, around uh, one inch thick uh, in the highest pressure cases to around 10 millimetres thick in the lowest pressure cases. Um, uh, for uh, anonymous attendee, um, is it acceptable to clean more often uh, if every few months if the cleaning method was faster um, it would it would really be an assessment of of how the cleaning method would be need to be very very fast to justify that we actually have a, um, a certain amount of downtime um, very expensive downtime just to take a tank out of circuit. Uh, I think just taking a tank out of circuit will cost us upwards of um, of a hundred thousand dollars of production. So the with a flat what we call a flash tank bypass, and um, that makes um, that makes taking it out frequently very expensive so the cleaning method would need to be extremely quick to justify that um for iaho um not sure the pronunciation of that but is ultrasonic used at all um we've never we've never tried um ultrasonics um we don't think that they would have enough energy um energy impact into the into the scale to be effective so, uh, so no, we've never tried those. Um, uh, for Vinay, um, the reactive silica, um, reactive silica is removed as part of our process. Um, after milling, we have um, a set of desilication tanks where the slurry is, the bauxite slurry is heated up to, um, is heated up. Uh, and held, and the reactive silica um, reacts in those tanks um, and comes and precipitates out of solution there, and then passes passes through digestion, um, and the the uh, the silica, the precipitated silica, is removed in either the uh, sand traps or the uh, mud thickeners further on in the process. The scale, we know that the scale that we are removing out of these vessels is almost exclusively, um, is almost exclusively a, um, a, uh, an alumina scale uh, with, with some entrained 
entrained mud, uh, but very little, very little silica component in there. Um, again, for Vinay, the chemistry of the steel vessels, they're generally just a plain um, uh, carbon steel, um, carbon steel manufactured to uh, a boiler, a, uh, a boiler um, steel standard. Um, usually around the uh, 350 um, megapascals strength. Um, for Paul, is is it reverse osmosis water? No, we don't use reverse osmosis water. It is it is um, fresh water, generally fresh water um, collected in our um, in our uh, in our freshwater dams. So runoff um, that is then. Um, it goes through a uh, potable water treatment plant, which includes uh, a basic level of uh, filtration plus chlorination. Um, and that's the water that we use in the high pressure water pumps. Um, uh, yep, uh, for Robert, the, yes, we, we, can, we can, we could definitely run our process um, at, um, at different um, with different parameters, that the scaling would be a lot lower, but the the productivity the the productivity of the overall process around the plant um, does require us to push the um, the super concentration of the alumina uh, quite high. Um, if we if we uh, reduce if we change the plant parameters to reduce that super that super concentration. Um, which would reduce scale um, growth, um, the amount of scale growth, uh, we would lose far too much um, production um, in that productivity. Uh, I, uh, for Iaho, um, the tanks, they vary in age. In Western Australia, we have, uh, we have one refinery that was, that's uh, 50 years old, a Quinana facility, one that is, um, 45 years old uh, our Panjara facility and one that is 35 years old which is our wager up facility so so the the youngest tanks are around 35 years old Andrew if I can just add uh, one, one comment for uh, all the participants and, and correct me if I'm wrong we've we've purposely left the challenge as open as possible but uh, one thing that's probably fair to say is that we've accepted that uh, scale formation is part of our process uh, and and we, we have teams um, involved in research and development that are actively working on reducing scale formation so the intent of this challenge is probably not so much to find a way to prevent scale from growing um, because we, we are quite experienced in that area, but probably more to deal with the fact that scale is going to appear and how could we remove it quicker? Would you, do you think that's fair to say, Andrew? Yeah, yeah, it, it is. It's, um, we have invested quite a lot of time uh, and effort into trying to minimize um, scale growth where we can, but uh, there's, there is, uh, We've had limited success with it. Um, we have had been able to make far more inroads in terms of uh, removing scale and being effective at removing scale. Um, uh, for John, uh, we have a lot of the scale. Um, it's actually qu would be quite difficult to get any off-site um, because it would be classed as a hazardous material. Um, so, but we, we, we do have quite a lot of character, characterizations of the scale um, that we may be able to help if somebody had specific questions, we could, we're likely to already have, have the answers, but actually supplying samples of the scale is, is difficult to do because it's classed as a hazardous material. Awesome. Well, I'll give people a, a, a few minutes to add some more questions. Um, but Paul, is there anything um, you wanted to add? Anything else that you think would be helpful information for people to know? No, I don't think so. I think Andrew has covered every question quite thoroughly. So. Um... 
Thanks, okay. very good. Got, got another question that's popped up there. Yep, so one more for Jai Vaughan. Uh, is um, con consideration using wall cleaners, the, um, uh, the momentum in, as I mentioned, is in most of these, uh, most of these tanks, um, most of these vessels, the, uh, the, the bulk of the vessels is actually filled with, um, with vapor during operation. So there is very little um, flow momentum in the vapor because it's a, because it's a gas rather than a fluid. Um, and also anything that is um, in that, in that scaling, that hot scaling environment, uh, anything mechanical uh, is extremely difficult to, would be extremely difficult to keep operational. Um, and, you know, we don't have to get access inside, inside that tank um, would incur the, um, the flash tank bypass operation that I talked about before at a cost of a hundred thousand dollars of, uh, of production. So we, we would be really wary about having anything being reliant on anything mechanical inside the tank um, during operation because getting access to it would be extremely expensive. Uh, yeah, we do have sprays that just a simple, uh, some simple spray nozzles uh, uh, inside the vessel and it's actually quite difficult to keep those operational um, for a full campaign of 18 months. Um, uh, for Shane's question, how hard's the scale versus the mild steel? The scale is is quite hard. I think on the, I'd have to go and check, but I think on the Mo scale, um, it's up towards up towards seven. So it is it is quite hard, very crystalline, um, but it is um, that's part of what makes it susceptible to high pressure water because it's um, it's quite fragile. If you um, if you can generate cracks in it, the uh, high pressure water will blast it apart fairly well. Uh, for Paul, um, the uh, the feed water pipes, um, the high pressure water pump is mounted on a truck at ground level, and we have hose runs that truck is parked as close as we can get it to the, uh, to the, uh, to the tank that's been cleaned. And then we have hose runs of around, um, uh, say of around 50 to 75 meters long would be about the longest I've seen, um, up to the, uh, up to the tank and into the tank. And then, at the end of end of that high pressure water hose will be the the tank cleaning head, and that has two nozzles that are only oh, that, that that has two nozzles that are only forty thousandths of an inch in diameter, and the pipe itself, the water feed pipe, is around um, I think it's nominally uh, three quarters three quarters of an inch. Um, diameter, so there is very little pressure loss along the uh, along that that pipe uh, before it, it. Most of the pressure loss does happen in the nozzles as the jet is created. Um, for for Joel, uh, we do have a chemical analysis of the scale. It's it is it is slightly vari variable. But it is predominantly the um, um, predominantly um, uh, sodium uh, predominantly um, the uh, alumina uh, aluminium oxide al two o four with three waters of crystallization or gibbsite is uh, is the name that it's given but al al two O three dot three H two O, and that is then it's the bit that varies is the quantity of mud that is incorporated, um, and the amount of um, soda, caustic soda that is uh, incorporated as well. 
Uh, yeah, and that's 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 about it. Awesome. Well, I'll give people um, a, a couple more minutes to add some more questions. In the meantime, I'll just quickly, um, well, while anyone's typing any more questions, just, um, oh, here's one that's come through already. <laughs> so, yeah, so okay. Okay, um, for Paul, yeah, the water feed uh, used in um, used in production, uh, the 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 production fluid is, well, uh, the production fluid is uh, concentrated caustic soda. It has a concentration of around um, two hundred and two hundred and forty uh, grams of caustic soda uh, per liter of of liquor. Um, so, and we, we make that liquor up, we make that liquor up from, um, for the plant production from cost, from concentrated, um, caustic soda, which, uh, concentrated caustic soda comes in at around, um, uh, around, uh, I think it's around 98 or 90%, uh, 90% caustic soda and we dilute that down with uh we actually dilute that down with uh lake water which is uh cooling uh, water from our cooling ponds which starts off with 20 kilo uh 20 grams per liter of caustic in it um and we mix it with enough concentrated caustic soda to produce the uh the production liquor that we use in the process um so that and that um that that liquor the the amount or well, the size of the pipe feeding the liquor in it varies between uh, different uh, refineries um, based on their uh, on their design and their their flow that goes through it. Um, it it is heated on entry so it it gets heated as it goes into digestion gets heated up to around one hundred and sixty degrees Celsius uh, and then that's to digest the uh, that's to digest the alumina, uh, and then it needs to be cooled down, cooled down to about 106 degrees Celsius, uh, and that gives it a vapor pressure, an atmospheric vapor pressure, so that it can be then processed in atmospheric tanks rather than pressure vessels, uh, and it is then uh, and that's for clarification, where we filter out the sand and the mud. And then the then after filtering out that it's further cooled down to the coolest it gets is around fifty five degrees Celsius, and that uh, fifty five degrees Celsius to to precipitate out the alumina in um, in precipitation. And then after that process, the the caustic liquor is returned to digestion, um, is returned to digestion where it then um, where it's then reheated up to 160 degrees Celsius again for reuse. Awesome. Okay. Well, um, as okay, got maybe 10 more minutes left if there's any more questions. Um, in the meantime, I'll just quickly share um, the website so people can see. Not that one. Um, yeah. Um, what. Uh, after the after the um, webinar, what the next steps are, what uh, and uh, how you can access more information. So, uh, on the website here, if you want to ask any more questions, we actually have a forum, uh, and you're able to uh, add a topic and ask an open question there. Um, any technical questions, we'll, we'll forward on on to to Andrew or Paul, um, so that they can can get back to you. So yeah, anything else you need to know. Um, or if there's any other information that, that you, you'd like, please just pop a question on them or make sure it gets back to the guys. Um, so the competition's open for another 30 days, so to the 14th of November. Um, so throughout that time, uh, you'll be able to start populating your submission, which you can edit as many times um, as you like um, uh, with all the details around you know, what uh, solution you might be proposing um, and likewise, yep, on the pages here, you'll be able to find uh, all the more more details um, and some diagrams as well and some images of the scale. Uh, and if you have any questions on the submission process at all, um, please pop that in the forum as well. 
um, obviously after their closing date, um, uh, Andrew and, and Paul and Johan will be uh, reviewing all the submissions uh, there and then uh, we'll be reaching back out to, to you guys uh, to continue the conversation. So yeah, if you have any, any questions, key things are, any questions, put them in the forum just there. We had any more questions? So no more questions come through. Um, Andrew or Johan or Paul, is there anything else you wanted to uh, mention or talk about before we close out the session? Um, I don't have anything more to add if there's no questions. Awesome. No, Johan, I'm anything fine. from you? Or oh, Paul, sorry, go ahead. No, I'm fine, Holly. Oh, Johan, is there anything you want to add to, to close out? I'm sorry, I had to walk away from my desk for the last two minutes to give something to someone at reception, so I didn't hear the question. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's it. We're just closing out the session, so I've gone through and answered all the questions. So I just wondered if there was anything um, anything else you wanted to add or, or include um, or any information you wanted to provide to people on the call. No, no, nothing. Just wanted to, I guess, uh, thank everybody for the engagement and seeing all these questions come through. It was actually quite quite insightful to see how people, how interested people are and some of the knowledge that seems to be floating around. So just looking forward to seeing what's coming next. Awesome. And Johan, did you want to comment briefly on, I guess, what's the opportunity with people to work with Alcoa on this? Sure. So we very much want to hear from people around uh, ideas and uh, we, we, I think we will welcome anything from a finished solution to a concept uh, and very much happy to engage with um, the successful participants to develop a solution either for Alcoa only or something for Alcoa that then can be commercialized to other um, Illumina companies around the world. Um, I think it's fair to say that uh, any of the Illumina producers around uh, town, so whether it's uh, South 32 or, or Rio Tinto or resell would be experiencing the same challenges as we do. Um, so I'd like to think that there's great opportunities in the market for uh, someone that can come up with a solution to this. Uh, and, and I think then more broadly actually um, show, show us that th there are different ways of doing business and maybe open opportunities for new challenges and new problems that we may or may not want to take out to market. Awesome. Thanks very much, Johan. Well, if um, any last opportunities for last minute for questions or last comments, Andrew or Paul, and then close it out. Cool. Everyone seems quiet. Well, yeah, I just want to say thanks yep. very much to to Andrew for answering all those all those questions in incredible detail. That's excellent. So I'm sure this has been incredibly useful uh, for everyone on the call. Um, and obviously, thanks, Paul and Johan, as well for for, for your for your input. So. Um, yeah, everyone, uh, we will, we have been recording this. So for those of you that did attend, uh, you will be able to read the recording as well. So yes, sorry. Yes, it has been recorded. So we will send out a, a copy for the attendees to, to review. And we can also put together um, a kind of FAQ of all the questions. So we had uh, yeah, 27 questions come through. So we'll summarize that for you guys and, and give that information back as well. Cool. Well, if there's nothing else, thanks again, everyone. Um, thanks, yeah, to all the team of Alcoa for, for putting all this together. And uh, thanks to all the people that dialed in and for all the really good questions that you, you asked. So you can look forward to hearing from us um, in a day or so with a link to review this and uh, as the FA FAQ summarized. So thanks very much. I'll, I'll close out the meeting now. So if you have any more questions, uh, please either email uh, me or pop them in the, the forum on the, on the website. Thanks, everybody. I will see you later. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat>